Welcome back to Car Groves. I'm Jake, and today we're gonna take the floor pans in the Mercury Cougar, which are just nasty, rusted out pans, and turn them into something solid that we can actually use. I just want to talk for a second about the quality of work we're doing. So to be able to save a car that's not worth a lot of money, you have to do things where it's strong and it works but and cheap, but not the concourse level. But who cares? It's going to get covered with carpet and have seats put in it. As long as it's as strong and as waterproof as it was from the factory, I don't care that you can see patches or that I didn't exactly spot weld it ex in the perfect place like the factory did it. It has nothing to do with how much fun the car is. So to keep it cheap and keep it fun, I'll show you guys how I replaced the floor pans in this car. This is what we're starting with. It is a rusty, nasty nightmare. So after you have the interior removed and you're assessing the damage of the floor pans, the first step is to get the flapper wheel, uh, like an 80 grit or a grinding disc wheel, and clean off the scale and assess how bad the rust really is and where you're going to need to put patches in. I'm using your plug. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some light but I washed I washed them. Yeah, out. that's fine. Thanks. Right. Yeah, man. As my friend Nate reminded me, don't forget to wear ear protection along with a respirator. So right here, I'm drilling out the spot welds for the seat pan riser. That has to be removed before you can really get in there and cut out the entire floor pan. Right here, I'm dropping in the new floor pan just to kind of see how it fits and see what other material I might need to remove. I then took a paint marker, outlined the, the line of where the pan is going to meet the current metal in the car. <clears throat> that way I know how far up to sand because I want to have good clean metal where I'm going to weld. Alright, so I've got the, I've got all the rust ground off as best I could. I'm just starting to spray this side with some rust inhibiting primer. I went for a stronger, more uh, aggressive primer on this side because it was a lot worse with the rust. Right here, I'm starting to throw the pop rivets in to suck the new pan to the existing floor structure. So basically we're at the stage where I pop riveted. What I was looking for was any high spots where it wasn't contacting very well with the existing body. And I threw a pop rivet in to suck it down. That way when I come into well, there's no gap. The interesting thing is how many people hate on the idea of pop riveting a floor pan in, but this thing is stout. Like, I weigh 250 pounds, and I can get in this car and stand on these floor pans. They don't even budge, which is nuts. I'm Obviously, we're going to weld them in place, 
But if you didn't have a welder and it was winter time and you had debris coming in the car, the floor pans are terrible, it's your daily driver, I wouldn't be scared at all to pop rivet some floor pans in. So that's it. Once all the metal was pop riveted in place and formed, sucking up close to the existing metal in the car, it was time to get it to welding. So just a couple of tips. And again, I'm not very experienced with this, but this is what I learned. Turn your wire speed down. That way you're not trying to push holes in the metal that you're actually welding or anything. Make sure your joints are really clean, as clean as you can get them. And come in at a shallow angle when you're laying your, your beads down. It's probably uh, midnight. There is a crazy storm coming in. I don't know if you guys can see this. So I'm literally stuck in the shop. I'm tired, I wanna go inside, and it is freaking nasty out. Hurricane blowing. Crap. I'm going to put a patch panel in there from the piece I cut off the quarter panel of the Suburban. And then when that's done, I'm gonna cut this spot out right there and work on that. But right now we're gonna work on this kind of T-shaped panel that needs to go right there. Again, the frame rails are in really good condition. Piece I cut off, and as, I, as you can see, it's just Swiss cheesed really bad. It's weak, I mean, you can you can fold it one-handed. All right, so I've taken my template I cut out. I've got that drying with the primer on it right now. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take this flapper wheel and I'm gonna clean up all the lines where I'm about to weld. All right, so I've got the panel put in and I just did a few pop rivets just to hold it in place. And then that way I could form this corner right here where I did the relief cut right there where there's a hump and then kind of get it to contour on the frame rails. So as you can see, these holes I drilled for the spot welds are just sitting right on the frame, really flush. There's no, there's no give in the panel at all. All right, so I'm using my vise to bend up a little patch and I'll show you guys where it goes like that. And what I'm trying to do is patch this hole right here and then leave enough room right there to weld. All right, so it's late, but I'm out here just welding up all these patch panels I put in. I got done welding, threw my pry burn down, seam sealed all the patches, and then just threw a fresh coat of paint on it. Looks so much better than it did. So what I was doing with that cut we just made was this little, I think it's eight inch by six inch piece. I put it in the vise, I just pulled down on it a little bit. And we're trying to make this piece that I had to cut out right here. And so basically it's just gonna go just like that. So I've got this patch made and it's pop riveted in place, just ready to weld. And I've got these two right here that I'm mocking up for these little pinholes. Here it is. I cannot express to you guys how much of an improvement and how excited I am about this car now. I mean, it's got solid pans in it. They're welded in. The back's all patched up. I mean, it's not a heap of crap anymore. This is a nice floor. I'm, I'm stoked. All right, that's it, guys. We did the floor pans in the Ratty Cougar for under $300 using a pair of floor pans for a 68 Mustang off eBay and just patching what was left that was good. 
If you like these kind of videos, if you like riding muscle cars, if you like guys goofing around the shop, please hit the subscribe button. Oh man, these new seats are gonna be really nice. Oh hey, and if you're doing floor pans on an actual car and you wanna see a tool list, just keep watching. I'll do a couple minutes of what tools I used. So let's talk about some of the tools we used in the project so you can kind of get an idea of what you'll need. Pop rivets, make sure you get steel because you're doing steel on steel. If you try to use aluminum on steel, it'll corrode. Pop rivet guns. I started out with a cheap Harbor Freight pop rivet gun, broke it within 10 pop rivets, piece of junk. I then stepped up to this one right here from Home Depot, it's Aero brand. You're gonna need a drill. You're gonna need some 1 8 inch bits, a bigger bit, and that's for drilling out spot welds. Unibit, scraper, there's a lot of uh, seam sealer and other products in the interior you're gonna get out of the way. Snips, that was mainly for welding, just to snip my wire if it went too long. Pliers, I use this several times to grab metal and bend it out of the way. So a chisel, and what I use this for is when I'm drilling out the spot welds, You'll take the chisel and a hammer, and I chisel out the spot welds after I've ground them. This works fantastic. DAP, ultra clear caulking for my seam sealing on the interior, and I went through five tubes of this. Paint pen to mark your panels, where they go, where you need to grind. This came in, in handy, as well as Sharpie for drawing out any templates you might do, or even marking on the interior of the car. When you're doing any kind of grinding on the car, wear the mask. Here's a new one versus the old. You can see how much it filtered out. Earplugs, when you're grinding, it is extremely loud inside the car. These earplugs were awesome. Cutoff wheels, they work awesome, but they burn up fast. And when they get down to about this size, right here, there's not really much you can do with them. You're probably gonna need a good 10 to 20 of these cutting wheels. I think I used about 15 of them. Grinding disc. This is what I started out using. It, it worked good for getting the thick scale off. If I had to do it again, and I, I did switch about halfway through, I used a 80 grit flapper wheel, and this seemed to work a lot better. So I would probably just start out with a flapper wheel only. Measuring tape, obviously, to uh, measure all your panels. Three pound sledge for when you want to get silly. I was convinced that I needed to find some weld through primer to seal these seams up. <clears throat> I bought two cans that were 15 bucks a piece. I probably wouldn't do this again. Reason being is this right here, this rusty metal primer with the reddish brown lid, not only laid a nice coat of primer that was easy to paint over but I could also weld through it so if I was to do it again I would probably use this right here your paint your top coat I did use the rust reformer on the insides of the frame rails and I used probably a half can of this I used about four cans of this rust-oleum rusty metal primer and then I used about four cans of my top coat dollar sheet of this poster board for cutting out my templates. This helped a ton. I also used scrap metal from the parts Suburban and two different motorcycle fenders to do my curved pieces. 